face the truth So we're gonna die So are you We chase the light Cause we need to move This is our science We got nothing to prove See Christy from Minneapolis uh, Take me Bienvenue dans le studio blanc de This Is Not A Live Song, les sessions Ferrarock dans le cadre de This Is Not A Love Song, le festival. Un festival avec un line-up démentiel. On va avoir le plaisir tout de suite d'accueillir Astronautalis Full Band. Et euh, ils regardaient tout à l'heure l'affiche la, et ils auraient bien aimé être là aussi un autre jour, tellement des amis à eux jouaient un peu partout pendant les trois jours. Astronautalis Full Band. Thanks guys for showing up. Uh, I know you have a rough time around, well, a great time as well. You're on a, as usual, on a tour, which means at least 40 gigs, uh, no days off. <laughs> we got uh, two whole days off in Budapest on this tour, which I think is the first time that's ever happened. Normally it's like 30 shows in 31 days. So we got a little time, which is very nice. We, uh, can you give us uh, just a glimpse of uh, what you're going to provide the audience today and we'll chat a little bit afterwards. Yeah, I'm going to play a couple of songs off of This Is Our Science, my last record, and I'm going to play another song that was supposed to be on This Is Our Science but didn't make it and then I just gave away on the internet a couple of months ago just because I was in a good mood. Uh, and because you explained it perfectly on the internet because you got it balanced financially, yeah. so now you can do whatever you want with it. Do whatever the hell I want, which is a fantastic feeling. <laughs> Please, yeah, let us right. enjoy Let's go. Choking a bit 
Asfalt Stai su Sembra andare Solo io Chase Lane I got nothing to do Tell me where you'll go With that knife in your head <laughs> Tell me what you're thinking, boy Do you got a plan? See, I don't trust your smile I know your daddy lets you run wild You touch your eyes, I can see you want so clear. Why is it I gotta break the wall to split, gun on his hip, he's reading his dick. If people thought it makes him up, he's talking shit. And he can rest his heavy fist, he got his own nigga, he's the only boy that's not gonna look at him. He'll think that this way he is against him with a man with the boots on his head, and only makes sense. Tell me this, put up your fingertips if you're living your life exactly the way that you wish to. For the rest of us, with our hands and our hips, our work is never done. We are sisters. Tell me where you go, where that night in your head. Yeah! Tell me what you're thinking, boy.
shortness of breath, no pains in your chest. The disease we agree that we ain't cured yet. Forgive me, dear. I never thought that we'd end up here. Sweet dreams whispered in your ear. Blah, 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 long and sleep so cold and cold. Thank you guys, thank you so much. Such a performance uh, usually t tends to leave me speechless because it's, uh, and it's each and every time we see you, it's each and every time the same energy and everything. Thank you very much. Uh, you, like we said just before, you're on a tour right now. Usually it's, it seems like you've been touring uh, for at least six months each and every year for, the, for some time right now, hasn't it? Six months is the low end. It's generally more like eight and we've, had a couple of years that it was 10 or 11, anywhere from 150 to 200 shows a year, generally. We like being on the road. Yeah, and crazy stuff as well, because I saw that uh, two gigs, one is in Bordeaux, the other one the day after is in Stuttgart. Like, uh, <laughs> what, what kind of a travel uh, agent do you have for uh, such a travel? <laughs> <laughs> Very DIY, punk rock travel agent. <laughs> That uh, doesn't often look at the map when they book us shows, but that's okay. We like looking out the window of your beautiful, beautiful continent. So all this means that you've been around for quite a long time now. We just said that and This Is Our Science uh, is the fourth album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, and uh, not naming um, numerous uh, collaborations, like at least long, like my forearms. Uh, what is it that you find in your music, in collaborations, and uh, in uh, touring with uh, other bands that we can name drop some? Well, when I started out making music, I just made it in my 
bedroom by myself with a computer. And that's really lonely business and it's also uh, really difficult because um, I'm not a musician, like I'm not a trained musician. I just got some, I pirated some software and had a bunch of records and started sampling stuff and making things. And um, I, I, I had a really hard time. I would hit a wall creatively. And I, I grew up uh, in theater, and theater was sort of where I was trained artistically, and that's a really collaborative art form. And I realized one day that I couldn't do this by myself, just like theater, you can't do it by yourself, you need a team of people. And that's when I started asking my friends, and I started with the friends that I grew up with, people like Radical Face who grew up down the street from me, and then as I toured more, I made more friends with my folks in Minneapolis and my friends in Texas and stuff. Like, Then just kind of add to the circle, and now it's at a point where I don't really love making music alone. I love making music with other people. I come to the studio, I go into the studio in July, and um, I come with my album probably 70% done um, because I think that other 30% are, is going to be what the other people bring to it. Like I have a really clear idea of what I want, but I leave it pretty open on the end because I know that whatever I want is going to change once I bring my super awesome friends in there. Plus, I don't know how to play instruments. I play piano like a chimp, you know, like I don't know what to do. So I need those people to help. It, it took you, uh, how long did it take you to uh, uh, form a band properly or convince people to go on on the road with you? Because I remember maybe last year you were, uh, it was written everywhere at as Astronautalis full band. Like people check out, it's not just me. Now, at least Europe has the full band. I'll, Was it that much difficult and how many times? Well, I mean, it, it's, it was mostly just financial more than anything. When I started out, I would play shows solo, and I had dreamed of having a band, um, but I, it, I just couldn't afford to do it. You know, when I, the first six years of touring, we were sleeping, me and my manager were sleeping in a Honda, you know, like that was our home. And then eventually it got to the point where we could afford to stay in shitty motels, and then eventually it got to the point where we could afford to bring a band in the United States, but then... Bringing a band in America is one thing, and then bringing a band to Europe was a whole other thing. And so we just realized we had to do it. We had to figure out a way to do it. And you know, even if we lost money on it, it had to be done. And it worked. It worked the first time last year, and then we did it again this year, and it's worked again. And that's just the. I mean, I've been doing this for 11 years. I never thought, a, that I would get to come to tour in Europe, and I never thought that I would come to tour in Europe for five years, and then eventually be able to bring my friends to Europe. Like that's the craziest thing ever. So it's a difficult thing, but it's just a. I have so many great friends who play or I get along with, but it's the money. It's an indie artist. You got to find the money to get five plane tickets to Europe. That ain't cheap. There's a, there's a thing about uh, because you're a part of the rap culture, and uh, sometimes mainly in Europe and especially in France, it scares people when we say rap. A journalist or uh, just uh, common fans just saying, well, I don't like rap. Well, listen to this kind of rap in the States that you call, I guess, alt rap that mixes uh, many genres, like, just like we saw, a rock, more smooth songs that would go back to blues, maybe mm -hmm. folk, sometimes electro. Uh, there's a huge scene and uh, people should mention, should see your name on collaborations with people like maybe Bluebird, I guess you worked with him? Yeah, yeah, Bluebird. Bluebird, is, Ancient mm -hmm. Meat, uh, yeah. so there's such a... There's mm -hmm. tons of those folks in rap that like, I came up through rap and so I still, even though sometimes I end up making a country song or a dance song, I still always think of myself as a rapper. I started out as a battle rapper, so that's always sort of in there. Um, and I still feel, for a long time I felt because I, was, I tried to distance myself from the rap community for a long time because I didn't like what was going on in rap music and now I really like where rap music is going again and so now I kind of feel like I want to be back in it again. So I'm enjoying rapping again. Um, I think one of the things that's really interesting in rap music now, especially um, in sort of an independent level is that rap music is becoming, it's doing what happened to rock music after the first you know, 30, 40 years of rock music when at first rock music was just you know, uh, you know, Chuck Berry duck walking across the stage but over the time it got crazier and crazier and it became all these 30,000 different kinds of rock music and now rap music is not just one thing and anybody who still thinks of rap music as one thing is old and they should stop because it's, it's a thousand things now because the difference even in pop rap The difference between Young Jeezy and the difference between Kendrick Lamar is worlds. I mean, this is worlds different, and that's not even getting into people like Bluebird or Ancient Myth that makes super crazy avant-garde rap. Um, it's a, yeah, I think thinking of something as just rap is, is a foolish old person's mistake. And there's something else uh, as well very interesting about this scene, um, because, for example, I, I know that a guy in uh, Zurich called Matter, 
there's uh, beats for rappers in the States. Mm -hmm. uh, P.T. Burnham, for example, is way all over the planet as yeah, well on, yeah. on his own. Uh, there is this communica communication community that the uh, internet allows, and there's a, a possibilities are wide open, in fact, today. Yeah, and it, I think it's, um, it's funny. I think rap has always been more punk than it even knew that it was. But now, the way the sort of DIY kind of approach to rap music that the internet has really allowed, I think, has really sort of brought the punk roots of rap music to the forefront, where I booked my shows through people, strangers I had never known through the internet who had heard my music through my friends or through some, you know, through MySpace 10 years ago. Um, and, and I found other people that I work on music with, and there are so many people that I have for pieces of music for my new record. There are several people on my new record that I'm working with that I've never met in my life. <laughs> like, but I love, I found them on SoundCloud or they hit me up on email or something and, we've, and we just connected and I love their music and I got along with them through text, you know? And so it's a, it's a funny thing. The internet has us all making music with people that we've never met before and that's a really exciting time. Just to uh, avoid you to have uh, name droppings and everything, but uh, you've been touring uh, with a bus driver, mm -hmm. with a gel from Anticon, with the band called Why. Mm -hmm. That shows the wide scope of uh, alliances and uh, gigs that can be booked with different uh, influences, but still something of a rap spirit. And uh, maybe just to finish, uh, how, 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 did you, how did you end up uh, singing or no writing music with uh, Politza for... Uh, for the guy from uh, of uh, gangs, it's just like an obscure thing, but it's a nice track that people should check. Yeah, yeah, the top back song. Well, Ryan uh, Olson, who is from gangs and also from Polisa, who writes all the most of the music for Polisa, uh, he lives down the street from me in Minneapolis, and he will always call me up in the middle of the night at like three in the morning and be like, "I need you to come over, and I want you to freestyle on this track," and I'll be in bed asleep and I'll be getting phone calls from him like get up get out of bed get up get out of bed and that night he was like I want you to come rap on this track and I'm like Ryan I'm in bed man I'm in bed and he's like I don't I don't care just get the hell out of bed and it's like winter in Minnesota it's cold outside and I get all dressed up and I ride my bike over there and I end up just drinking whiskey with him all night until the sun comes up and just freestyling on every he just keeps playing me music and I just keep freestyling and freestyling and he'll play me a couple of tracks and I'll freestyle over it like three times and it'll go, cool, next song. And then we'll go to the next song. And then like six months later, he's like, oh yeah, I got Chani from Polisa to sing on there. Yeah, and so here's the song. <laughs> like, and it just, you, like when you, it's one of the funny things he's working on a lot of stuff with me now. And it's one of the funny things when you work with him. Uh, it's just, he just, um, you don't know what you're working on. He just makes you work on things. And then six months later, you're in a band. Um, and it's the strangest situation. But yeah, it started because he was, um, I met him through a rapper uh, named P.O.S. He used to play music with P.O.S. live. And that's the uh, reason I ended up moving to Minneapolis was for those people, for the people in gangs and Doomtree and uh, Bon Iver and those, all that community. And um, yeah, so now I just get calls in the middle of the night all the time and end up on songs with awesome musicians by accident. Thank you for giving us so much insight in a, a, a cartography, a map of, yeah, yeah, of, yeah. of this scene. Um, next album is going to be pretty soon, mm -hmm. sort of right now. Yeah. So we'll be uh, expecting it, I guess. And um, maybe let's uh, leave this to uh, some more music right now. Thank you very much for uh, showing up. Uh, Thank you. We enjoyed it. And uh, I think people will look at rap music differently now. Certainly hope so. Thanks. Certainly hope so. All right, we're going to play two more songs, and then uh, we're going to get the heck out of here. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, now. 